We're also hearing as well some latest uh, detail on this. Insiders who attended events at Downing Street during lockdown have told the BBC how staff crowded together, sat on each other's laps and how party debris was left overnight. And, of course, the latest photos have put the PM under more pressure from some of his own back benches. Let's speak to one such person now. Sir Roger Gale is the Conservative MP for North Thanet. Afternoon to you, Roger. Um, you've kind of been against Mr Johnson, wanted him to resign, then didn't want him to resign. Where are you today? Um, I have felt for a very long time that he was not the right person to be Prime Minister. I put in my letter of um, calling for a no-confidence vote about a year and a half ago after um, the Barnard Castle affair. So um, my pedigree with the, for this, if you like, goes back long before Partygate. Um, I then said about four weeks ago that I didn't think that the middle of an international crisis was the time for the Tory party to indulge in a leadership election. Um, at that time, we were facing probably the greatest crisis since the Cuban Missile Affair, for those that can remember that far back, when it looked as though uh, Vladimir Putin might be about to use battlefield nuclear weapons. That could have precipitated World War III. That moment has passed, I hope, and it looks now as though we're in, sadly, for a war of attrition in Ukraine. There are other burning issues that you mentioned, the cost of living increase, Northern Ireland Protocol, there's a, there's a litany of things that the Prime Minister and his government, the government that I support, ought to be attending to. So, in a sense, this is a woefully unnecessary distraction. But it is serious because the probity of the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom matters. So should he stay? No. Um, I'm afraid the Prime Minister has, in my view, knowingly misled the House of Commons from the dispatch box. On, in December, he was asked, straight question, was there a party in Downing Street on the 13th of December? Mr Johnson said no, and then qualified that by saying, and in any event, the rules were adhered to. It's now plain that there was a party in Downing Street. The photographs show that. So the answer was not no, but yes. Uh, the Prime Minister misled the House, and under normal circumstances, a Prime Minister or a Minister having done that and not having immediately clarified the position, has only one option, and that is to resign. And, of course, his defence, Roger, as you will be aware, is the, well, hang on, I, I didn't think there were any parties and I didn't think there were any breaches of the rules. But the Prime Minister, forgive me, and the Prime Minister actually attended that party. He, he's photographed holding a glass. Uh, we are told that Indeed. he poured drinks. I don't remember. I wasn't a fly on that wall. But I, th I think his contention would still be, well, it wasn't a party, it was just some people leaving and I walked in and said, thank you very much, cheers, good luck and goodbye. I've got to get back to work now. Um, that is the suggestion that's being put forward. But unfortunately, the evidence doesn't stack that up. And in any event, lots of people were leaving during the pandemic, terminally leaving in crematoria and graveyards. And the people attending those funerals, some of whom I represent, were not allowed to raise a glass in company to the departed. And for the Prime Minister to believe that that is in order in his own house, because after the order, number 10 is his house as well, I, I find quite extraordinary. But the fact, the, the bottom line on this is, the Prime Minister came to the House of Commons, was asked, was there a party? and said no when he should have said yes. In terms of where this story goes next, I mean, let's assume... Uh, and the smart money, Roger, does seem to suggest... I know there's yourself and there's a, a couple of your fellow Kent MPs, I think, Phil, uh, I think Tom Tugendhat has made a, a similar noises too, and there will be others, Steve Baker notably, uh, perhaps... Um, but he's likely to survive this, isn't he? He's, he's likely to get through this, and if he does... What, what happens then? What happens to uh, good, long-standing backbenchers like yourself? Do you re refuse oh, to remain I, I, in the party? Do you not stand at the next no, election? Uh, I, um, I am a Conservative, strange that it may seem. Sometimes people may feel that it doesn't look like that. But I am a Conservative, and I shall die a Conservative. Uh, I'm very proud to be a member of the Conservative Party, and always have been. I believe in our policies. 
And you know, this government is getting a lot of things right. But we are faced with a prime minister who has this eccentric relationship with the truth. And we can't go on like this, lurching from crisis to crisis to crisis. Now, it's all, you know, people will say, oh, God, that's Gail banging on again. Why doesn't he shut up or retire or whatever? And indeed, I get those emails, of course. Um, but I believe in the probity of government and in trust in public office. Yeah, none of us is perfect. I've made mistakes. I've done things in the course of 39 years in the House that I am or ought to be ashamed of, I'm sure. I'm not trying to be holier than thou about this, but I think when you have a Prime Minister that comes to the House of Commons and says one thing when he should have been saying something else, you have to say, is this man fit to lead the country? Now, it's up to my colleagues in the House to decide what they want to do about this. I've made my view plain. That is all I can do. I'm not rushing around the tea room trying to persuade people to put in letters of no confidence in the Prime Minister. That is up to them. And totally honourably, a lot of them have said... We want to wait and see the full Sue Gray report. I form my judgment long before Partygate. Others have reserved their judgment. They'll exercise that, I guess, within the next couple of days, and they will do so clearly in the light of the knowledge of the events of the last 48 hours.